Welcome. This video is going to take a look at solution concentration and how you can calculate how strong or weak a solution is. So solution concentration is really a measure of how much solute is dissolved in a specific amount of solvent or your solution. So there's three terms you have to be clear on here. Solute is the stuff being dissolved, and we often think of the solute as being a solid, and in our everyday lives that often is the case, although it could just as easily be a liquid or a gas. And then the solvent is the stuff doing the dissolving, and we often think of that as being a liquid, and again, that often is the case, although the solvent could also be a solid or a gas. And so solute is usually the one you have less of. It's being dissolved, so it seems to disappear. And the solvent is generally what you have more of, and it's doing the dissolving or pulling the solute apart. And then the solution is when the solute has been dissolved or spread out in the solvent. So it's described qualitatively just using the term dilute and concentrated, or sometimes people use the term weak and strong, although chemists try and avoid the terms weak and strong because we also describe acids and bases with weak and strong. It has a little bit different meaning with acids and bases. And it can be calculated quantitatively by looking at the masses, and you can either calculate what's called molality or mole fractions, or you can calculate the percent by mass. And then it can also be calculated by looking at the volume of your solute and solvent, and then you can calculate the molarity or percent by volume. And the two second ones here, molarity and percent by volume, are the two that are probably most often used along with percent by mass. So in this particular video, we are going to look at percent concentration, percent by mass, and percent by volume. So remember, percent is always looking at some part you're interested in out of the whole thing that you're looking at, times 100%. So you could either be looking at the mass of the solute compared to the total mass of the solution, or you'd be looking at the volume of the solute compared to the total volume of the solution. But both measurements have to be in the same unit. You can't use the mass of the solute and the volume of the solution. And so I've got the equation here for you, and you notice that solution is really your solute plus your solvent, so you have to be careful when you're reading problems to see if they've already added the solute and solvent together and told you what the total amount is, or do you need to add them together? So read carefully as we work through these problems. So for example, a saltwater aquarium must maintain a sodium chloride solution similar to ocean water, which is 7.8 grams of NaCl per 50 milliliters of water. What is the percent by mass of NaCl in the solution? So I need my solute, in grams over my solution in grams. And I've got a couple things going on here. And that's going to be times 100%. The solute is easy. That's already in grams, 7.8 grams. The solution, they haven't told me what my total mass of my solution is, so I'm going to have to add my solute, my 7.8 grams, plus the mass of my um, solvent, but my solvent is given to me as 50 milliliters of water. And the important thing that chemists are expected to remember is that water very conveniently has a density of one gram per milliliter. And now this is true just for water, that it's one gram per milliliter. So that means if I have 50 milliliters of water, I also have 50 grams of water. So you can think of grams and milliliters as being interchangeable units for water only. So now I have my problem set up, 7.8 grams over the total solution, which is going to be 57.8. So now when I go ahead and divide that and multiply by 100, I come up with a percent by mass of 13.5%. And if you'd forgotten to add this together, if you just took 7.8 over 50, you would have come up with a percentage of 15.6, which is not the same thing, even though it's kind of close. So look at the second example here. This one, I've switched it up a little bit, and now we know what our percent composition is, and we want to change it back to volume or mass of the solute in this case. So it says isopropyl rub rubbing alcohol is usually 70% alcohol and 30% water. If you have 750 milliliters of rubbing alcohol, how much of the total is alcohol and how much is water? 
Well, I'm going to use my same equation of solute over solution times 100% gives me my percent composition. But in this case, I know what the question mark is. I know it's 70% alcohol and 30% water. So I can plug the 70% in. I know the 100%. And as far as this, I don't know how much is solute, but I do know my total solution is 750 milliliters. So to solve for this, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by, squeeze it in here, I have to multiply by 750, but divide by 100 to get X all alone, which means I do the same thing on this side, 750 over 100, and I come up with X milliliters of solute has to be equal to 70 times 7.5 is equal to 525 milliliters. And you notice I didn't do anything with changing that percent to a decimal because I've taken care of that with the 100 percent here. So if I put my labels in here, my percents cancel out and my milliliters cancel out. Now some of you maybe looked at this and knew you could just take 0 0.70 times 750. That's fine if you recognize that. This is why it works, because 70 over 100 is 0 0.70 times the 750. As far as how much is water, I can set the same problem up with my 750 milliliters on the bottom times 100%, and now this is going to be equal to 30%, and so now when I take 30% times 750 over 100, because I have to get rid of my 100 and 750 again. This time I'm going to come up with X equal to 225 milliliters. And you notice these two add up to the total of 750. So if I'd been confident on my first answer, I could have just taken the 525 and subtracted from 750, and the difference should be my water. So here's some examples for you to try. I've got a total of three of them. The first problem here says a solution contains 223 grams of solute, 476 grams of solute, solvent, what is the percent concentration? So um, since it doesn't specify, we can assume it means what's the percent of solute in this solution. So I've got my solute. I need to divide by the total, and since they haven't added the solute and solvent together, I need to do that. Or that needs to become one number, and then I can multiply by 100%, and I'll have my percent concentration. So 223 divided by my total there, times 100%, and keeping three sig figs, I'm coming up with a percentage of 31.9%. Here's a second one for you to try. It says a 1.5 liter solution contains 223 milliliters of a solute. What is the percent volume? So go ahead and uh, pause this and see if you can figure this one out on your own. As you start on this one, one of the first issues you notice is you have milliliters and liters. So you have to remember that um, one liter equals a thousand milliliters so you either have to change your 223 milliliters to liters or your 1.5 liters to milliliters. I'm going to change the 1.5 liters so I don't have to work with decimals. So I see that there's 1,000 milliliters in 1 liter. So this is really 1,500 milliliters. So now when I set my problem, I have 223 milliliters. This time, they've told me this is my total solution, so I just put the 1,500 down here. I don't add the 223 to it. That's already been taken care of for me. And I multiply by 100%. So in this case, I get a percent concentration by volume of 14.9%. And the last one for you, I've told you that um, a normal bottle of saline solution is 0.9% salt by mass, so I want to know how many grams of salt would be in a one liter bottle. Now, this is similar to the triad I gave you that one liter 
is a volume, and I'm asking you for percent by mass. Well, remember, one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. We also know that 1,000 milliliters would weigh 1,000 grams. So my problem really is I want to know X grams out of 1,000 grams times 100% would give me that 0.9% solution. So I have to multiply by 1,000 but divide by 100 to make these cancel out. And when I do that on this side, multiply by 1,000, divide by 100. Hopefully you notice that really means you're multiplying by 10. So there must be 9 grams of NaCl in 1,000 grams or 1 liter of water.